So normally when I do breakdowns, I do breakdowns of submissions that are actually finished, but I did have a request on another video in the comments from a commenter named Hello uh, asking about Carlos Barza's attempted ankle locks in the fight against Marina Rodriguez. So I'm going to break down both attempts and why they failed. But before I go into her specific attempts, I'm actually going to show more about the straight ankle lock as a whole. So this is a short clip from a video that Dean Lister put out on the straight ankle lock. Dean Lister is known for his leg attacks. You should definitely watch the whole video if you're interested in learning more about it, but I'm just going to point out a few details. Um, for one, one of the things that you'll notice right away, and this is going to be an IBJF legal one where he's not reaping across, uh, in both of the Carlos Barza attempts, she did not really reap the, reap the knee, which is fine, but that's just the variation that's being used here. So this foot is sort of pushing off of the hip, and then the other foot is also going to be pushing off on the hip. So he falls off to the side to go for the finish, which again is fine. Um, and from here, he keeps that high grip, and he's going to extend his back out and put a lot of pressure there. But you also notice here this foot on the hip. What that foot on the hip does, it helps him extend, but also within an MMA context where you can be punched. If you're the one being attacked with a with a straight ankle lock, you want to be able to sit up here and get within distance where your arm, or specifically your fist, can reach your opponent's head. But by kicking off on your hips here, um, hip slash um, like lower stomach even, you can keep someone from getting within range to even punch you in the first place. So using uh, this top leg to extend out and keep them from getting within punching distance is a really big detail with an MMA. So here he's just talking about how you can adjust the grip. And here you see him extending out. So that's how you want to typically finish. And as you can see from here, nowhere within punching range when he's going to get the finish. He's kicking away with that top foot. Uh, also worth noting, in this finish, he is having to extend out and use a lot of the space back here. If you're up against the fence, especially if your back is up against the fence, it can limit how far you can extend back. And that can really do a lot of damage to your ability to actually be able to get, get the finish here. So the first failed ankle lock attempt is actually caused by that. So initially, Carlos Barza is here with her back towards the mat. If this is a 35-foot octagon, that means she's probably got about 30 feet to work with here if she drops back right here. But if she turns around and has her back to the fence, then she's only got a few feet to work with, and that's not going to be enough for her to get the finish. Now, for most of this um, position right here, Marina Rodriguez had a closed guard, so it's not as though dropping to an ankle lock was an was was available. So I don't think that Carlos Barza was planning on going for an ankle lock here. I think it was just one of those things where when she turned, she saw the opening and then went, went for it when she saw it. So here we see she's getting close to the fence, decides to turn around. Uh, the, the guard's still closed here. And, and I really don't think that Carlos Barza was planning, I'm going to ankle lock this girl, I'm going to ankle lock this girl. I just think it's one of those things where she catches it in practice. She saw an opening and she went for it. Uh, not necessarily thinking about the fact that the fence was right behind her. So here she stands up, the guard opens, scoops up the ankle right here. And is now going to drop back and immediately, I, I think at this point she probably knew like she messed up at that point. Once her back just slammed against the back of the fence and she realized she didn't have any space to extend out. Uh, so from here, she, she's not going to want to go for the straight ankle lock from here. She's going to want to look to adjust from there. Uh, but Marina Rodriguez will take advantage of the fact that Carla can't extend and come up. Carla tries to change the angle here, um, but even still Marina is going to be able to get up here. Uh, Marina probably, it looks like her foot's off to the side here. I, ideally, you want to have your foot actually flat on the mat here, so they can't extend it on a straight ankle lock, but it's not really like it really mattered here. Um, and you're going to see Carlos Barza go from having this outside foot on the hip and then the inside foot inside as well to bringing her leg outside, sort of like a 50-50 position. Now, granted, for 50-50, that would mean that Marina Rodriguez is also having the same position, so she is coming around the outside as well. Um, but when you have like the 50-50 position from bottom like this and your opponent has this foot outside, it's a really dangerous position. It's a position where you can get your guard passed really easily. And Marina Rodriguez missed that opportunity, but didn't miss the opportunity to land some serious ground and pound. So from here, if she actually scoops her ankle back uh, in this direction uh, and then really pressures into Esparza, she could actually pass at least to side control, if not to a better position than that. Um, but here she just kind of makes sure that her leg's okay. Again, now she's pulled it back, so this is exactly where she wants to be. From here, what I'd probably want to do is I take my right hand and then push on the knee, uh, push on Esparza's left knee towards the outside. Uh, hip in in that direction and it's just going to turn Asparza's hips off to Asparza's right and then you can sort of come around from the back uh, kick your leg free and then from there a few different positions you can pass to but Rodriguez decided that she would rather just go for ground and power from here which isn't necessarily a bad idea so land some heavy shots up against the fence um, Asparza bails on the position um, from here even still Rodriguez probably could have pulled her leg free but it's not like it really matters she's landing some hard shots and Asparza just wanted to get out of there 
And as far as it goes back to Butterfly Guard, so that ends that specific opportunity. So to recap the first ankle lock, the, the main issue that as far as it had is that she fell back right into the fence, which really limited her ability to extend out. Uh, so that specific opportunity wasn't all that close. She did it with about a minute left in the round. And the time that Rodriguez had on top where she was able to land ground and pound was enough for her to steal the round on a lot of the judges' scorecards and for her to get the win here. In the second round, there's about 30 seconds left before she drops for the, the second ankle lock. Uh, this one was much closer than the first one, and I'll show as it goes through. Um, by the time that Rodriguez was out, there was about 25 seconds for her to get some ground and pound in. Uh, I think for one judge, that was enough for her to steal the round, but for the other two, it wasn't. So again, there's an open guard here. Esparza reflexively attacks the ankle lock, or attacks the ankle lock again, so she's going to scoop underneath here with her right arm. Scoops it, drops. This time, no offense in the way, so she's actually going to be able to extend out. Now, that detail that I talked about with Dean Lister is a big one here in that he used the top leg to extend on the hips and keep his, um, his uke, in that case, the, the person who he was demonstrating the technique on, he was able to keep that person within outside of punching distance. Esparza doesn't do a great job of that here, and I think in a jiu-jitsu context, she might have been able to finish this ankle lock if you're not allowed to punch, but because she doesn't extend out here, this is going to be why Rodriguez is able to punch her way out of this position. So... First foot a little bit across the hip. This might be a reap under IBJJF, but no one cares in MMA. Um, but this top leg here, she kind of like has her ankle in there more so than her shin or her knee, and she's not really able to extend as a result. Um, so here we are again. So from here, this top leg really isn't doing much to push Rodriguez away. And so as a result, Rodriguez is going to be able to work her way up within punching distance and start landing some punches. But if you actually, and I want you to pay really close attention because it's going to flash by really quickly. If you look at Marina Rodriguez's ankle, it actually is extended out pretty good. Let me see if I can stop it just in time. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so as you can see right here, typically the ankle is going to be pointing in this way under normal circumstances. The way that a strength ankle lock works is that you extend it fully out, kind of like if you're imagining that you're like doing a flutter kick right now, just do that with your feet. That's about as far as you can go. Now imagine someone pulling it beyond that point. That's effectively what the straight ankle lock does here. And it, it looks like it's relatively close here. Like you can see like right behind the heel right here, you can see the angle on the ankle. The ankle lock is actually in fairly tight uh, here with 27 seconds left. But again, this top leg is not doing anything to push Rodriguez's hips away. All she really has on the top leg is like the top of her, pretty much the top of her left foot. That's not going to be enough here to keep Rodriguez away. So Rodriguez is going to try to fight the hands um, to sort of limit how much as far as it can extend out on here on here but she's going to realize that she's actually within punching distance of Esparza's head and is going to start defending that way. Lands a heavy shot. And this one actually opens a mouse or creates a mouse over Esparza's eye. And now at this point, Esparza has to make a decision. Am I going to try to get the finish here while having both of my hands committed to the bottom leg and just getting punched over and over? Or am I going to have to say, Hey, this is not going to work out for me. Let me just bail before it becomes a bigger issue than it already is. Uh, and, and she's still trying to get the ankle lock, but Rodriguez keeps landing. Uh, Esparza's trying to go face down and bury the head, but even still, Esparza, or, um, Rodriguez is still landing heavy shots. And Esparza quickly realizes this is not going to go well for me. Uh, so now about about 10 seconds left in the round, still taking heavy shots. Now gets back to some sort of a guard. Uh, and then for the last 10 seconds, Rodriguez is able to swing away and and do enough, at least in one judge's eye, to steal the round there. Um, but... At the end of the day, the second ankle lock was much closer than the first one, as we caught on that on that um, on that screen cap right there. Uh, she she did have the ankle extended out, but again, by not being able to push away from the hips with her top leg, it kept it put Rodriguez in a position in MMA where she was able to reach her with her head because punches are legal in MMA. You can then punch the opponent in the face, and so as far as I had to make a decision, do I think I'm gonna be able to finish this, or I'm gonna take a bunch of unanswered shots to the face? And she had to bail on it as a result. This was just grappling. If it was just jujitsu. She might have been able to get that finish because the punch escape isn't going to be an option there. Uh, but because it is MMA, it's especially important in leg entanglements that you're doing a good job of controlling your opponent's hips and keeping them out of range to punch you in the face and having your face available to be punched. That's one of the reasons why people talk about leg locks being dangerous in MMA. A straight ankle lock is an ankle lock that can be finished in MMA. Uh, if we go back to that image of Dean Lister, I mean, from here, you're not punching him in the face. Like, he's going to get the finish on you, but you have to have your all, all the details there. You have to be able to extend out and keep them from being within position to punch you because if they are in a position to punch you, they're going to, and that can potentially cause you to, to lose a position, lose a submission, and possibly even lose a round that ends up costing you the fight. In this case, it was a split decision as far as it didn't lose the fight, but the, the one mistake here with her top leg could have cost her in that second round, and had one more judge seen it that way, she might have taken an L here.